It's good to see you all here this evening. We are going to get started with 298 in your hymnals. So let's stay on sing 298. God leads us along. It's good to see you all here at Anchor Baptist Church. We're going to get started with 298 in shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet. God leads us along. 298. In shady and so sweet, God leads his dear children along, where the waters will flow, babes, a weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along, some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood, some through great sorrow, but God gives us all in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children alone. Sometimes of night, God leads his dear children along, some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood, some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children alone. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood. Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Away from the mire and away from the clay. in glory, eternity's day, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Brother Hanson. Well, how y'all are, man? 
Um, I attended two different churches while I was gone. Didn't like either one of them. You know, so there's a, you know, Mama's Fried Chicken is Mama's Fried Chicken. And uh, there's a comfort level. I understand I missed a visit from the Holy Spirit during the revival. How many got their cups full then? Because I was, I was remote from getting some of it, so it was good. It was good. Um, and I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, young man, why don't you open us up in prayer? Loudly so everybody can hear God especially. Amen. How many here went out on Sunday doing tracks? Yeah, well, you get a lot done. How many? You get a lot done when you got a lot of people. So I, I thank you for doing that. First Sunday of every month we'll do that around 2.30. And say that again? A bunch. Just so you all know, Friday, if you want to come over, I'm going to play with my butts. So we can get them ready to cook. And um, Sherry's going to help me. <laughs> so, well, if they don't know what I'm talking about, there's something wrong with those people. They ought to come here and get it in person. Both of them. Yes, sir. Okay, so... Um, Mark McGay, he was here. We have a disc in the back that has all eight of his messages on it, plus all 52 songs that were sung. Uh, it's an MP3, so you have to pick that up, convert it if you want to, but you can stick it in your computer. Or if you bring a thumb drive, I can just drop it in the uh, computer and dump the whole thing. So anyway, it says, catch some good preaching, and it's got Daisy on the front catching some. But that's not the big deal. The big deal is that um, I was helping the pastor with all of his preaching sermons, and we had them all listed, and I went through, and I cleaned them all up and put them all on a long list, and I came across some very interesting sermons, which I put on a disc in the back, 12 sermons from the past, including days when you wish you were wearing Nikes, detours, dead ends, and dry holes, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, How Lefty Killed Hefty, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Yeah, I know, I know the word. And Knock, Knock, Knocking on Heaven's Door, um, Taste Great, Less Filling, and When God Takes Out the Trash. So anyway, uh, they're all real good sermons. I actually listened to them all. Uh, there on the disc in the back if you want to hear some really good preaching. Thank you. Uh, the Bible Institute's going to start up in the fall. When is that going to be, Chuck? This month. Do we know what's going to be taught this month? All right, and so pastor's going to teach the book of James, Ben's going to do 2 Thessalonians, and uh, Chuck is going to do Judges and Ruth. If you want to just kill some time while you're riding to work and pick up on some stuff subliminally, excellent way to do it. So it's, it's good stuff in there. And uh, Pardon me? No, just tell them and they'll bring you a, a tape. He usually got them here. There, it's it's rem, it's going to be on tape this semester, correct? Okay. Play the CD.
good. If, if Jesse would do an instruction manual, because I can barely turn the radio on, much less plug something else in. So. What did you guys sing with when you were here with the Doucette? I mean, that's the one night I missed. Huh? You were there when it happened? What did you sing? I, oh, that's the name of the song. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. Good, good. You can tell I'm right on time with everything. Joseph said something last year. He's trying to hurt my feelings, but he can't do it. He says, it's fun to play when somebody knows what they're doing. <laughs> and it's, again, it, it's when, when you don't look like you're innocent, to be dead. You don't remember that? You don't remember saying that, do you? Yeah. That's the first thing to do. All right. Sunday. Sunday, September 11th, the Board of Trustees meetings. Now, this is such a, an interesting event. We're going to plan a dinner around this meeting so that uh, everybody can participate and enjoy what's going on. So uh, Sunday, the uh, September 11th, you can come and witness the fastest business meeting in the history of Anchor Baptist Church. And then immediately following, we will have a cookout where you will have some of my butts. So, and October, Saturday, October 7th and 8th, the ladies' meeting at Allen Ryman Church. Who's planning on going to that? Nobody. One, two, three. Okay, good. Good. Um, it's always, always interesting up there. The, okay. Billy's finally out of the closet. <laughs> so, so. All right, let's move along. Let's, let's get to something spiritual here. I'm tired of y'all disrupting everything. Uh, did anybody pass out any tracks this week? Anybody get a witness in? Anybody lead anybody to Christ? Okay, somebody want to give a testimony? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Life is but a vapor. Yes. Yes. In the 40 years she's been going to Catholic Church, right? What's her name? Marie Farrell. Well, you're a former Catholic. There's nobody better than you. Somebody like that coming to this kind of function with somebody like Mark and with the music that you had going on. And uh, five Baptists are, are louder than 15 Catholic churches when it comes to singing. So uh, that's something she's not used to. So keep Marie Farrell in... Uh, Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. What is it, Colossians 2, 18, the traditions and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's where they get it. I mean, it's, it's like um, um, a rope teaching and they just kind of march like little dead soldiers. And the liberty that you get here, that's, the reason I'm in a Baptist church is because it most resembles what I read in the Bible. And it's a, it's a freedom, it's an inner freedom that I achieved 33 years ago and I haven't gotten over it yet. But... Keep on working on that gown to bring her back. You know, pastors preaching Sunday, show her the differences. <laughs> yeah, speaking Italian, the Italian dance. Yeah. Um, okay, well that's good. I mean, that, um, anybody else got anything to add? Ooh. Yeah. You, wait, your mother-in-law is a crab or wanted wanted crab? Oh, I'm sorry. She, okay. Is that over there by Donnie Davison? You don't know Donnie? Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, well, good. Good. You know, you know where the Lone Star is. I watch Hank walk in that place with bib overalls, a woe mule hat, the King James Bible, and the guy sold the bar. He converted the guy. So you never know what's going to happen. I just I would pray that I would have a smidget of the boldness that Hank had. So. All right. Anybody else for salvation? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like Catholics with different kind of food. Huh. Well, good. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. How about sickness? Um. I don't actually know the full definition, but I talked to my friend today, and Jim O'Mara's biopsy came back today from his procedure, and it's atypical, and what I've been told is that's cancer. So he was really depressed, really sick, and I ask you to keep him in prayer, Jim O'Mara. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, yeah. Um, does Elise still communicate with her?
All right. Uh, anybody else for sickly? Yes, sir. And her name? All right, that's Chuck's mother. She fell and broke her hip. They're going to screw it together and see if they can get it to men, right? Is that it? Yes, sir. Okay. If you would uh, continue to pray for Kenzie Jones, she was... She was at um, Winston-Salem today at the cardio clinic. Uh, she's not a, not a candidate for this external uh, oblation, so they're going to have to go in. And he's had like five surgeries. He may or may not get it. So if he doesn't get it, his life will revol revolve around about a 100-foot circle because that's about as much as he can do. Yes, sir. K I N Z Y. Yeah. Um, when I was in Charlotte, I had dinner with uh, Sandy and Tom Flaherty. And uh, Tom's lost like 70 pounds. He looks good. They, we had a uh, conference with this uh, oncologist. They took an MRI. The tumor in his liver has disappeared, and the one in his pancreas has shrunk. Uh, but he has a very aggressive type of, of uh, cancer, and just pray for that. To combat it and make himself feel better, he went out and bought a three, 355 uh, BMW convertible. He has no hair, so he doesn't have to worry about it blowing on his hair. But it was, it was, it was funny. So, uh, Sandy is, is just sweet as she can be. Yes. Uh-huh. What's her name? It's on the text, right? Isaac, you work there too now, don't you? Pardon me? Okay. Yeah, I mean, man. You're the guy that's blowing the windows out of my house in the morning. So, between AP Hill, Indian Head, and Dahlgren, the house shakes all the time. But that's the sound of freedom as far as I'm concerned. I love it. So, uh, anybody else? How about answers to prayer? Yes, ma'am. They put the tubes for fluid behind the eardrum? Okay, so it's draining. Good. Okay, anything else? How about others? Uh, tomorrow, Janet Gross is to go to settlement on her house in Shepherdstown, and then she's also bought a house tentatively in uh, Delaware. Off of 113, not too terribly far from where Ryman is. But the last time she had a contract on her house was one hour from the settlement. The lady did a walkthrough. She'd moved all the furniture out and painted the place. Well, it looks different. I don't want to buy it. So um, let's play, pray tomorrow. Things will go well. So, um, 
we have um, um, ladies with child. Any new developments there? Oh my God, no, not you. I got gotcha. you. What's your sister's name? Justice. Justice. Yeah, I'd, I'd be a little leery. Donnie's not even trying to bid on houses now, is he? Because of the uncertainty in the market. Donnie Majors. Yes, ma'am. Spell her last name. C H A M. Okay. All right. Work situation. Yes. Ferguson is another one of the big contractors, right? A vendor? Okay. Uh, anyone else? Um, Jesse, you had a couple of interviews. Anything back on them yet? Okay. All right. On the road. We got Mickey. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you a little further. Um, all right, we've got uh, new new converts. Um, keep them in prayer. Uh, street preaching on the 18th. The 24th is pumpkin patch, and the 25th is choir practice. Um, anybody have anything else? Okay. Good to see Howie back. I, he's been back a while, but I've been going a while, so it's good to see you. Uh, he hasn't changed much. Yeah, we were hoping for improvement, but I guess <laughs> just when you have a weak prayer life, that's what happens. Uh, Brother Ron, please pray for the, uh, the uh, prayer list we've got here, the offering, and the pastor's message. Green light comes on, right? There we go. <laughs> Depending on how you hold it, brother. So I was uh, watching. Y'all had, had a Baptocostal fit that one night. 
<laughs> it was a blessing. And uh, see, it's, it's tomorrow morning right now, so I would get up in the morning and get my coffee and plug in the YouTube. Let me say this about YouTube. Um, I've been, I am doing classes for two Bible institutes in the Philippines, and I am uploading them to YouTube. So if you go to my, my YouTube page, I guess you just look for Howard Hunter, and then um, you can you can listen to it. listen to him. The first the first eight is a uh, it's a history of the English Bible, and it, it, it gives a background of where our King James Bible came from. And now we're going through Brother Walker's book on on the dispensational truth, and it's really good. It's really deep. Uh, it'll 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 help you. And so. Um, the need of God's children is to, is, to, is to get a hold of some book, some Bible. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. The, um, the last six months have been good, tiring, frustrating, um, sometimes heartbreaking, amen. But um, you see the Lord's hand in it. We saw, let's see, we had about 40 saved in the medical missions. And then we had... Um, the last two weeks, the last week and a half before I left, I was in Cagayan de Oro, Mindanao, and we were helping a, another missionary who wants to start a church. It's about two hours from where he lives at, an hour and a half. And so we spent, uh, went up there, passed out tracks, and then we preached. We had uh, 20 some saved on Saturday, and then and then Sunday we had about another five or ten. We don't, we're not, I'm not real. I don't, I don't really push numbers. Um, when I do an invitation, um, because it's a Catholic country, you, you don't just, I, I don't want them just to add, the, the Filipinos tend to add Baptist to Catholic to Iglesia de Cristo to, you know, whatever religion, just hoping that they'll be good enough. So what you do, what I do is, 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 I, is I, I ask them, will you? If you will trust Jesus Christ, why don't you raise your hand? And I had, we had 20 of them that, the, the first night. So then I said, all right, if you've raised your hand and you, want, you will, for the first time, trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to stand up. Now, everybody else, is, you know, they got their heads bowed and, and praying, but to have, to have a Filipino stand up in a crowd is, is very big. It's, it, they, don't, they don't do that stuff. And so uh, it, it was a blessing. I, I don't do the one, two, three, repeat after me. I don't believe in, believe in that, but... Uh, I do, I, do, I do believe you need to, you need to apply the, you need, there needs, needs to be an application and an invitation. Amen. I got saved when, when, it, when the, the preaching on hell was applied. Amen. And then I was invited. Would you trust Jesus Christ? You know, I said, I think I will. Amen. And that's, that's, that's what you want to do. That's, that's, that's what we try to do with them. So um, the radio station in Paranaki is repaired. They now have a 1,000-watt transmitter. So we, we had 500 or 300 watt before. We reached all the way up to about half, the southern half of Manila and, and almost down to Columba. That's, that's a long ways down the road. And so um, now I'm sure we're reaching even, even further with that, with that signal. And the, the, station in, the station in Cebu's doing okay. There's some, there's some, you just pray for the, the whole situation there. The Lord will really guide and direct and help. It's been a real blessing and help to that church, but there's some real problems, and the Lord knows all about it. The bum on the street, the rich in the palaces, the poor and unlearned, and men of David, they all have a soul. In need of salvation, and they all have to come by Calvary. I am so glad God saves those sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how He sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming all sinners is that he would save a sinner like me. <coughs> Was 
was I so bad? I needed forgiveness. Was I so wrong? I must be redeemed. Well, I was no thief, but I lived in sin's prison. So I was as lost as a sinner could be. I am so glad God saves all sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed how he sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming all sinners is that he would save a sinner like me. Yes, it's that he would save a sinner like me. Amen. Amen. Glad for that. Amen. All right, if you would open your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Revelation, chapter 3. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, I, I'd like to thank the Lord for safety on the road, in the air. <laughs> Amen. Um, sometimes, boy, I tell you, traveling overseas in the Philippines, driving is a, is a test of your constraint and control, put it that way, because you, you, you have no concept. Uh, I, I have I, I've started to do it once or twice. I never could really get it done. Thank you. But uh, to record driving somewhere, you know, it, here in, it's wonderful. Here you get in your car and you crank it up. You take off in your one hand. You listen. You know, playing with the radio and you drive. You don't do that over there. You are like this ninety all the time. You're looking because you have people passing you on the right hand on the shoulder. It, it's it's just crazy. And you know, motorcycles coming in and out and going. It's crazy. And so, I mean, I, I drove all over Luzon, uh, and God gave me safety. I, I flew, I flew, see, I flew to Cebu, flew back to, to Manila, flew down to Cebu again, then down to Cagayan de Oro, then back to Manila, and back, all over the place, and uh, didn't lose any baggage, had no problems with connections, was able to get everywhere it needed to go, and God was awful good and faithful, and I'm so thankful for that. And uh, uh, He's just good. It's, it's just... It's just good to be in on, in on his what he's doing, and that's 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 the key. That's the key. All right, Revelation chapter three. Look in verse verse thirteen. We'll just read a few verses, and then we'll go to go to Acts chapter twenty. No, Acts chapter four. I think it is. Revelation chapter three. We'll start in verse thirteen. He that hath a hear an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, and unto the angel of the church of, La of the Laodiceans write: These things saith the Amen the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot or cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him uh, and sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to stand behind your desk one more time. Lord, open your book. These are your words. And God, these are your people. You know the needs of each and every heart. I pray, Lord, that you'd just come and visit us here. God, we, when you show up, when you, when you move the, in the aisles of anchor, Father, it thrills our hearts, and we'd just like to give you an invitation, Father, and pray that you'd speak and you encourage and help, Lord God, and yes, rebuke, we take it uh, from a, as, a, as a son from a father. We pray that you bless this time tonight in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen, 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 amen. 
All right, if you would, uh, I, I've, I've always been fascinated by verse 20. You know, we use that verse in soul winning. And that's, that's okay. You can do that. That's a good thing. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear. So, but that really ha has to do with a, a local Laodicean church. Now, we are in Laodicea. Uh, that's just uh, where we are. You can't do anything about it. But you don't have to be a Laodicean Christian. Amen. You can, you can decide, I'm going to be a Philadelphian Christian. I'm going to have the joy of the Lord. I'm going to have, I'm going to be busy about the Lord's business. I'm going to be trusting his word. Amen. That's what, that's what, uh, what, it, it, what happened with the, with the folks at the church at Laodicea, or at uh, Philippi, at, uh, the Philippi, uh, Philadelphian church age people. So, but, he, but he, he said there at the last verse, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. There's some things that our churches should be busy about doing. And he taught, we, you know, I, I, I preached a, a message on the, the judgment seat of Christ. That's what's coming up next. I, I, I hope it starts tomorrow. I hope we get raptured tonight. Amen. That'd be wonderful. Amen. But, uh, you know, in, until it does, then, then there's some things that every independent, Bible-believing, soul-winning, sin-hating, Baptist church needs to be busy about doing. Now, I, I, I think I'm just preaching to the choir pretty much here tonight, and we won't be very long. But, um, boy, if we had, it, 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 can you imagine if every church, whether it's, whether it's a mainline denomination like the Methodists, because you, you know, folks, the Methodists used to shell the corn. Amen. And Bob Jones Sr. was a hellfire and damnation preacher. Amen. And he's a Methodist. The Methodists used to, used to preach on hell. The Presbyterians used to preach on hell. Amen. The Assemblies of God used to preach on hell. Everybody used to preach salvation true, the Lord Jesus Christ real. They, have, they had some, change, some differences in how they did things, but the message was the same. If you don't trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to die and bust hell wide open. That's the message that, that everybody had. So, so the lost folks had no relief. They go to a Methodist church and they hear, you're going you're gonna to die and bust hell wide open. They go to a Presbyterian, you're going to die and bust hell wide, wide open, especially if you're not one of the elect. Amen. That's how they were. Everywhere they went. Nowadays... And, and, and you, the illustration is that the ladies from the, from the Catholic Church that come in, they said, man, I haven't heard anything like that in 30 years. 30, can you imagine being in some place for 30 years and not having God show up? Man, no wonder the doors are closing. Amen. Hey, honey, if God don't walk in sometime and move around that bill and, and show you that he's alive, I don't know about you, but I, I'm leaving. I'm going to find some place where he's at. I, I, I don't care if it's a brush arbor. Amen. I, I preach there too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, there's a critical need of our churches. A man one time, one time says, said this, the most critical need of the church at this moment is men, the right kind of men, bold men, free men. And that, that's what you talked about, the, the liberty that's here. The church must seek in prayer and in much humility the coming again of men made of the stuff of which prophets and martyrs are made. That was A.W. Tozer. Do you know A.W. Tozer was not a Baptist? It's Assemblies of God, if I'm not mistaken. Amen. Listen, there's some folks that, 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 that knew that, 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 that our local Bible-preaching churches, of whatever stripe they are, as long as they have the true gospel, they needed some men. They need some men. And it's a sad commentary that most of our independent King James Bible-believing Baptist churches are made up of women. I, now, don't get me, ladies, thank God for you. Amen. But, but, but you know, I'm, I look at men, and I say, where, I, where are you at? Amen. Amen. One of the things that struck me about, about PBI, when you got down there, the, the, the ratio was two to one men to, men to women. Of course, now it's, it's a Bible institute, and it's following Dr. Rutman, you know, a, a, a leader of men. But, but still, it, it really struck me that, that, boy, this place has got a lot of men. And, of course, the, the shout was on there. There's a, a man named Dr. James Murch said this, the world is being inoculated with a mild form of Christianity which is making us immune to the real thing, the real thing. So what you see today, you know, you, you stand there on the street corner, street preaching, and, and people go by and they honk the horn, they go, yay, amen. Well, come on, what? don't pull over and come and join us. Hey, get out there and let the world see a unified voice that the Lord Jesus Christ is true and right and salvation is in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need. Look, uh, Revelation 3, he talks about being lukewarm. 
wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked, yet they have all kinds of money. The church that I, I was raised in, I didn't get saved in that church. It was, it was a Baptist church in, up in Illinois. And uh, after, I, after I went in the Navy, um, it always was kind of the big church in town. It wasn't First Baptist, but it was just down, just below the First, the first Baptist church. And so I, uh, I went away to the Navy and, and got saved in, in uh, December of 1977 aboard the USS America, came back, and of course I went to the church with mom and dad. And all of a sudden, they had, you know, there were one or two soul winners in that church when I, that I knew of. I had one guy that, that, that accosted me at church camp and put his finger in my face and said, you need to get saved. And I ran. <laughs> Roland La Folle. Um, but they, those, guys, those guys all died off. They were gone. So I got back, and, 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 and I, I realized that they had taken a whole parking lot out, and they were building this auditorium. I mean, it is humongous. And, and it was $11 million that they were putting into that building. And you know what that building had? It had a stage and the lights and all. The, the pastor had gone to this, this How to Grow Your Church seminar, you know, and you, you, had to, you had to build it bigger and you had to have the stage. You had to have the worship. Team, and they went that whole, down that whole road, and now the church is just falling apart. There's hardly anybody in there. Um, they think they're just because they have money, just because they have wherewithal, that they're rich. But the Lord says, he says, you're lukewarm, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind. Why are they lukewarm? You know what I think the greatest temptation, the greatest danger for any Christian is? If you've been saved 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years, the greatest danger you have is just to get tired. We fought a war. It took us, took us uh, what was it, 10 years? Vietnam? Was it 10 years or 20? It was, ten, it was 10 full years of war in Vietnam. And after a while, the American people just got tired of the body count and the maimed and the pictures and all the stuff that come. So, so, so it's a war of attrition. And every child of God today, that's what you're in. You're in, you're in the fight of your life to get through this life without, without failing or falling or stopping living for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, 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 that's one thing. We've we, we got we to have some folks. We, we, most, most folks have just enough God to soothe their conscience. Amen. And just enough the world to, com to be comfortable. Hey, I don't want to be comfortable in this world. The more I see this world, the, 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 the more depressed I get. I like, amen. Amen. You can have this world. I don't want, I'm looking for a better world wherein dwelleth righteousness. You know, in that Bible, you hear about Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah's been the, the prophet of God, and he stood up in, in God's place and declared to the, to the people of Israel some things that were so, and, and tried to get them, kick them back to God, and try to rebuke them, try to, try to love them. Amen. Try to tell them the truth. And he, he finally is getting ready to come off the scene. And you, you know the story that the, 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 the chariots of God comes and picks them up and takes them up, and the mantle comes down. And, and Elijah. Elisha grabs a hold of that mantle and goes up to the Jordan and smacks the Jordan and the Jordan separates. And he says these words, where is the God of Elijah? Can I say it this way? I think in our independent King James Bible, even Baptist, we need, where is, where is the Elijahs of God? We need some men, amen, young folks, men that will stand up and be counted and say, yes, it's going to cost me something to do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to cost me something to stand up and be a testimony in my, in my job, in my business. It's going to cost you something. But, hey, I want you to know something. God sees all those things. And he sheds abroad in your heart. We, we, sing, that so, we, sing, the, we sing the song, Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause and blush to speak his name? Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease? While others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas, are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend of grace to help me on to God? Sure, I must fight if I would reign. Increase my courage, Lord. I bear, I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. We need some Elijahs, some Elijahs, the, the duty of the church. So I, I guess if, if you were to put a title on this, is the church of duty or what every church should be actively doing, and, and I, I think part of this I'm just going to be preaching to the choir, 
But uh, turn over to Acts chapter 17, if you would. Acts chapter 17. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say about what, what every church should be. Now, it would be, I, I just wish this would go all over and all, the, all of our, all the churches, whatever, whatever group, whatever. Wouldn't it be wonderful to go out there to go street preaching and not be able to find a place to street preach? Because there was somebody on every corner. Hey, don't you know that would stir up your community? <laughs> That's what, every, listen, every community needs an independent, Bible-believing, Baptist, sin-hating, hell, fire, damnation preaching church that will stir up the area it is in. Look in Acts chapter 17, verses 5 and 6. Acts chapter 17, but the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither. Well, what, 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 what happened here? These, these, these Christians that showed up and they began to preach Jesus Christ. They didn't preach themselves. They didn't preach the Baptist church. Amen. They didn't preach their religion. They preached a Savior that men could know. That's the difference. What you, what you, when you get into an into a independent Bible-believing Baptist church and you get folks that love the book and love the Lord because of what he's done for them, then there is liberty. Amen. There is an ability Man, you know, to grab a flag and run, have a good time. Amen. That, there's nothing wrong with that. That's good stuff. Amen. <laughs> it is. So how did they do it? Look in, look in Acts chapter 4. What was it that stirred everybody up so much in, <clears throat> in this situation? Acts chapter 4. Look in verse 13. Acts chapter 4. Acts 4, 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men. You know, God can use you. So I'm dumber than a box of rocks. Thank God, God can use you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if you've ever read or you've ever known much about Dr. Rutman, do you know that that guy every five years went through some kind of catastrophe? I mean, one time he was in, he was in Tommy Taylor's a paint van, uh, one of these slide, like, like a UPS van, and it was full of all kinds of, you know, cleaning solvents and paint and all kinds of varnish and different things in the back, and he's running across this track, the railroad tracks, and the, and the engine dies, and he can't get off the railroad tracks, and a train's coming, and he jumps out the last minute, and did, did it hit the, blew the, hit the, <laughs> hit the van and knocked you know, the one time he's trying to, he, he's, he's running a chainsaw, and a chainsaw skips and jumps and hits him in the face, cuts him up, cuts him up. I'm, we're out playing, we, we, we like street hockey. This is before they had the gymnasium. This is back in the old days. And we're playing, it, we're playing in a practice court for handball and for tennis. So, there's, so, so, there, so Dan Gilbert's there, and Dan Gilbert, the guy is a supernatural athlete. Everybody else, when they hit golf balls, they hit him down the range. He had to go to one corner and hit it all because he hit it, hit it so far that it would go outside the whole place. So he would ha he'd hit a catty corner. So so he reaches back and he slaps, and we couldn't find the right the right ball because the the real balls were heavy. They wouldn't they wouldn't launch. So they had a tennis ball, and he he reached reared back and smacked that tennis ball. And that thing must have been doing 300 miles an hour. And a guy put his, put his stick down on the ground, and it hits that tennis ball and went right in Dr. Rutman's eye. He was in the hospital for three days. Yeah. Man, <laughs> we're all leaving. He's going, hey, man, you guys, go ahead, go finish playing the game. And we're, we're like, no, no, we can't. It was over. It was over that night. But um, now I don't remember. That's the problem when you start running rabbits. They just take off, amen. All right, so Acts chapter 4, verse 13, verse 13. Oh, the, the boldness. So God will use you. The reason why God put, God put, let Dr. Ruckman go through all those things is to keep him humble. God put the hammer on Dr. Ruckman every now and then and did it hard because the, the, the light that God showed him, folks, um, would puff a man's head up. I don't care who you are. He's going to put you up. So the Lord every now and then would just reach over with his, with his Holy Ghost pen and just let the air out of, out of Brother Rucker a little bit, and he'd just settle back down. Amen. 
So he says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. So, so the first thing that happened is some bold preaching. You know, look, in, look at the end, the end of the verse. It says, it says they could say nothing against it. The preaching of Peter and John and these fellows could not be refuted by the religious crowd. You get out on a street corner and you lift up your voice and you tell folks about what the Lord's done for you and the, salva the salvation he's got, uh, given to you. There's something in that, in that transaction. And there is a transaction between someone standing on a street corner and testifying or holding a scripture sign and the folks driving by. Amen. Amen. God is just looking for somebody just to speak up. Bold preaching. Look in verse 10. Look in verse 10. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. This guy is shelling the corn. He's calling them everything but white. Uh, whom God raised up, raised from the dead, even by you, by him doth this man stand here before you whole. So they, tell, they told the lost of their sin, whom ye crucified, whom you did this thing, and he let them have it. That's what, that's what good Bible preaching does. Amen. Good Bible preaching, it's like, it's like, get, it's like getting real filthy dirty. Amen. I've worked heavy, heavy equipment repair. You are not dirty until you pull the belly pan off of a, off of a, a D11, honey. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, and the grease falls down there, and you got to crawl on that to get it. Amen. Andy knows, yeah, you get that grease everywhere. Amen. But boy, so you get done, you go, you find your hot shower, turn that thing on, and stand there about 10 minutes, and soap up three or four times, and boy, it is so wonderful. That's what Bible preaching does. Amen. God, thank God for, for fellows that will that'll look at you in your face and say, I love you, but you were wrong. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but I'm wrong a lot, and I need some help every now and then to make sure I get right. Amen. That's what, that's what, that's what the preacher's job is to do. Stand up there and proclaim, thus saith the Lord, we need some, some Elijahs of God that will be able to, to preach the word. Bold preaching. What stirs up the area that you're in? Bible convictions. Look in verse 18 and 20. And they called them and commanded them that they, that they not speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. Do you know you can, you can tell, and it doesn't, it'd be wonderful. I, 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 I said this, I don't know if I said it here. I've said it in several places. I would love to preach at the, at the, what's the, at the, on the, on the Sunday, Sunday evening, is it, su is it Christmas Eve service in the Vatican, where they have 250,000 people, wouldn't, uh, you talk about an opportunity, man, let the, let the Pope, I'll pay my own way, amen, and what, why, L listen, you have, listen, folks, do you know that, that, that most Catholics are very serious about their religion, amen, the ones, the ones that are there, I mean, they're there for, for mass, they're there for, for confession, they're there for Ash Wednesday. I mean, come to the Philippines. Hallelujah, man. Ash Wednesday, everybody's walking around with a smug. I, 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 it was Ash Wednesday in Alabong, and they have, a, they have a cathedral, a little cathedral there. And I, and I went up there, and they had a, they, they imported an Italian priest. And he was standing there, and he had a little dish, and had, had, had whatever kind of ashes those are. And he, and he was bored out of his mind, because he had this line of folks going out and around the corner. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father. In the name, that's all he was doing. But boy, when, 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 when God's children get a hold of the Lord and stand up and begin to tell what the Lord has done in them and for them, this world says, no, that, that, that can't be. I knew you before you got saved, or, you know, before, before you got religion. I, I knew you before you got religion, uh, Joseph. Yeah, amen. Yeah, I, you stole from me before. Amen. And then you can, you can look him in the face and that, and that, and that, that, Truth that's inside of you in the Holy Spirit and God, the whole, God comes through and speaks to that heart. Listen, folks, the person that does the soul winning is not you or I. It's the Holy Spirit of God. When, when he has come, he will, he will reprove the world of sin and of just, judgment and, and, and condemnation. He, he's the one. By Bible, by Bible conviction. They were convinced in verse 19 that God was right. Amen. We're not standing up saying 
Anchor Baptist Church is right. We're standing up saying the God of Anchor Baptist Church is right. And the book that we stand upon is right. Amen. That's our final authority. It's not, it's not, it's not any of us. It's this old book. It's the Lord of this book. I like verse 20. Look in verse 20. For we cannot but speak the things as we have seen and heard. They had, they had convictions, and they spoke those convictions in their heart. Can you give an answer to someone? Who, who, who asked you about, what, what happened to you? I knew you years ago. You're not like you were before. Amen. So well, I'm, I'm real bashful. I can't. Well, you can give a gospel track, can't you? That'll tell about it, won't it? Amen, amen. We need to stir up the area we're in by bold preaching, by Bible convictions, by the Holy Ghost power. Look in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness, not with tongues. No, sir. No, sir. The evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is an ability to stand up and where, where you should be bashful, or where you should be timid, is to be able to speak up. The Bible says, amen, amen. That's why street preaching is a wonderful thing. Because why? Because you get out there and all of a sudden you realize what this world really thinks of the Savior that, that saved you. Amen, folks. Amen. But, but and that's what the world, the world's looking for someone who'll speak up their convictions and 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 go by the, the power of the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Look in verse 26. Where does this power come from? How do you get a hold of this? And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, they're praying. They're praying. Lord, thou, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast known at both Herod and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles. They're praying. Verse 20, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Verse 31, then they prayed. The difference in a, in, a, in a church that's making a difference in the community is that you're praying for your community. We went out, we went out Sunday. It, it, it was hot. I'm telling you, I was melting. I didn't wear, I didn't, I didn't wear, because I knew. I, do you know what needs to happen? That's, uh, we were in, we were in what, what was it called, a state's? Something in the states? What was the place we were in? Steeplechase. That's steeplechase. We need to go back there with a different track and maybe door hangers or just knock on doors in, in about a week, three or four days, and then go back in the same houses the same, three or four days later and do it again. What, you, what, what happens is, listen, they've had the Mormons come by. They've had the Jehovah's Witness come by. They've had, they've had, you know, salesmen and everybody. So they see you the first time, they think, oh, there's a bunch of, a bunch of them religious fanatics. And so we give, them a, we give them a gospel track and an invitation to church. And you come back by a few days later and you do it again. And they say, what's with these people? There's something going on here. And in between, you're starting to pray. Amen. Lord, I'll pray for that, folks that, that guy that lives in 3427 Park Avenue there. Oh, would, yeah, he would, seemed like he was interested a little bit. Would you speak to his heart? Amen. The, the power, the power of Anchor Baptist Church, it's not, in, it's not in, in, in a powerful pulpit. It's not in great abilities. It's in the Holy Spirit of God. And when the Lord moves in, when the Lord begins to work, it'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll stir some things. And that's what we want. We, we want to see the Lord save some souls and, and, and do, stir up this community we're in. Our job, listen, we're supposed to be witnesses both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and in the othermost part. Thank God for, for a mission board in the back. That's a blessing. Thank God for trying to reach Virginia or Maryland with the gospel. But, honey, I got news for you. <laughs> we need to reach Faulkner. Amen. We need to get out there and, and knock on the doors locally. Bold preaching, Bible convictions, Holy Ghost power. William Booth said it this way. He said, I like my religion like I like my tea. Amen. I mean, honey, if it's dead, bury it. Let's just go home. 
Amen. 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 Says, Brother, you get offended when they run? No, not at all. I'm not, I'm not a runner. Now, I will get up and wait. You know, I, I, if it gets really good, I get to laughing. Amen. Dr. Rumman, he liked to throw stuff. You know, I, some, some guys cry. Some guys run. I, I, now, I have been in a service where it, got, it, was, it was so thick that you didn't know you were running until a few minutes later. It's like, wait, how did I get up here? Been there. That was, that was Rex, Rex Harris and Judy Thuros in 1980. 81 singing the watch night service. It was, that was a foggy night, brother. Well, whatever church should be doing. Number two, I'd like to say this. Um, we need to be doing something so that the world, the, the people in our community, in our town, pays attention to the Bible. Turn to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. This world is desperate. To know what's in this book. They, they don't know they need it. Amen. But they do. And I'll be honest with you. Your neighbor across from you and behind you and on either side of you. God put you there. Um, and those people are watching you. They're saying, man, what, what kind of a bird do we have here? You know, you give them gospel tracts and they, they know you're gone. Listen, they know you are gone Sunday morning. Sunday evening and Wednesday night, and sometimes, you know, you went to a church all week? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Because in their mind, they can't imagine. Can you imagine going to a Catholic church every night for a week? Oh, my. I'll, I'll, honest to goodness, I, 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 was raised, I, I was raised in a Baptist church. But one of, my, one of the guys I played football with was B. Farrell, and B. was Catholic. And we get drunk together. I mean, we we tie it on, and so so one Sunday morning, you know, I, I, I told my mom, "Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to church with B." You know, she said, "Okay." So Saturday night we got loaded, and Sunday morning we got up. Went you know we went to, we went to mass. It was wonderful. Twenty minutes in and out, we're done. <laughs> well, you know why that is? That bird ain't got nothing to say. He's got no burden on his heart. He's got no message he wants to get across to to, to people. Amen. They don't have a, they, listen, they don't have a song to sing. They don't have, they don't have, what was Betty? They don't have, they don't have a piano to play to us. Amen. They don't, <laughs> they don't have what you, what you have. But they need to know about it. Amen. We were, uh, we, was it down in Mindoro, Mindanao? I can't remember exactly where we were at. We were, we, we'd eaten lunch, and, um, we had a bunch of Christians with us. And so I, I, I was with another missionary, um, um, Brother Stegman, and uh, Brother Dax was with me. And uh, so I said, I said, guys, watch this. So, we, we, no, yeah, we were with, we were with Brother, uh, we were with the young, um, oh, he's, a, he's got a little church just started, had a wonderful time way out in the middle of nowhere. And so we, we went to town and got, went to the restaurant. And so we're sitting there, and so I, so I started to sing an amazing grace. And, and the Christians all got it. I mean, it was like that. They were singing. And the whole place stopped. Because they, they'd never seen anything like that. Amen, folks. You'll say, you'll do more. You, you break, out, break, into, break out into four-part harmony. Amen. And you sing about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got news for you. You'll, they, will, they will go away with a witness they haven't heard any other time. Amen. They'll go and they'll sit down in that Catholic church and they'll sit there and the, the priest will go, eeny, meeny, fee, fi, fo, fum. I can play dominoes better than you can. Amen. You know, on and on and on. And, and in, in the back of their mind, the Holy Spirit says, that's not the same, is it? Amen. 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 We just need to have some folks that will make the, make the people pay attention. Acts chapter 5, verse 17. Acts 5 says, Then the high priest rose up and all that they were with him which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple. <laughs> what, you talk about a commission. Amen. I mean, I mean you know, I, I, I've got a, you have the Lord. Walk, one of the things we, we, we desperately want to know sometimes is, Lord, are you really in this? <laughs> Is this really what you want? So he comes in there, shakes the place, kicks them out, and says, go stand and preach in the temple. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Go, man. All the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with them, and called the council together and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. And you know the story? They weren't there. The power is the word of God that they preached. Acts, or John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Listen, Psalms 138, 2, thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. What God's looking for are some folks that will just be a, be a testimony and witness for him. Look in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Acts 5, 29. Now, I don't know how the Lord would have you do this, but you can do this. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hung on a tree. They begin to tell about what happened. Down, look down to verse 33 for time's sake. Then they heard that. They were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So they, they witnessed about what the Lord Jesus Christ did for them and how he was crucified and buried and rose again the third day. And, and, he, they, they, and the, the brethren there put their fingers in their face and said, You're the one. You did it. Amen. It's not this, it's not this lifestyle evangelism. No, it's a matter of, hey, you need to get a gospel track, take your bony little old finger, stick it in somebody's face sooner or later, say, I love you. Amen. But if you don't get saved and trust Jesus Christ, your Savior, you're going to die and bust hell wide open. Amen. And that, that'll stir them up. We, we need to make the people pay attention. Um, look in Acts chapter 17, verse 1. Acts 17. What every church should be doing, make the people pay attention to the Bible. We need to keep the lost folks under conviction. That's, what, that's what's happened to this Laodicean church, this, this, this church that's lost his zeal, it's lost his fire, lost his power. Acts chapter 17, look in verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered. He came to die. Amen. The first time he came to suffer. But I got news. He, he, next time he's coming, he ain't coming to suffer. Hallelujah. And risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude. And of the chief women, not a few, but the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the basest sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. When they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren, and the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down. Their nerves, I like Billy Kelly put it this way, he says, their nerves were tore up. <laughs> You listen, you you start to tell folks about what the Lord's done. What you're gonna see, they're gonna, their nerves are gonna get all tore up. And they may get real mad at you at, at first. But boy, you just keep on putting the fire on. You just keep on putting, putting the wood on. You throw a little gas on every now and then, amen, a little gospel track, and tell them about, about what the Lord's done for you. And you tell them, I, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. You know what'll happen? I mean, they'll either totally reject the Lord and just run off crazy, or what, sooner or later, one of these days. Hey, uh, can I talk to you about the, about this stuff you you're, you got into? Your this religious thing. Man, my wife's getting ready to leave me. My kids hate me. And my dog hates me. <laughs> my my world's falling apart. Amen. And God will God will use it. Keep the lost people under conviction. Look in look in Acts chapter sixteen verse twenty. This is what this, this, this church was doing. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. <laughs> they were tearing them up, and they weren't doing anything. They weren't, listen, they were not protesting in the streets. They were not marching at the, none of that stuff. They were just telling about this wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I like this. In, in, in verse 2, he reasoned out of the Scripture. Isaiah, that matches Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Amen. Though your sins be a scarlet. That's the, listen, the message we have is, are you a sinner? 
that's the hard part. It's to, it's to, it's to, it's to convince a man that he's a sinner. If you can get him to the place where he will admit that he's a sinner, that's what you've been fighting, sis. <laughs> he, he didn't think he's bad enough. I'm not a sinner. I didn't think I was a sinner. I, listen, I, had not, I was not Hitler. I, I, wouldn't, I, would, I didn't kill anybody. I was a good kid. Amen, and I was. But I was a sinner without hope and without God. And thank God for that, for, for that little church on the ship. And thank God for, for, for Oliver B. Green preaching on hell. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit coming by and grabbing my heart and squeezing and saying, hey, you're going to bust hell wide open. That's, that's the message. And if, 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 they'll, if they'll begin to hear that, boy, pretty good. Look in, look in Acts 17, verse 3. What did they preach? Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, not the Baptist church, amen, this, not baptism, not the good works, whom I preach unto you is Christ. We need to keep the lost under conviction. I, I need to finish. I'm just going to give you the last point, and we'll go home. I, think, I also think, I think this, um, the church's duty we need to put pressure on every politician in town. Now, you can't do a lot to influence the major elections. You can pray, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're commanded to pray for those that have the rule over us. But, honey, I got news for you in the local. Um, I haven't been able to do it much. I want to. Uh, I got a good preacher friend that he started a thing. They call it Bap the, the Baptist Correspondence. That's about three or four words, Baptist Correspondence group or something, and what he does is he tries to encourage Christians to write letters to their, to their congressmen and to their senators so that they're on a first-name basis. Because <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff that he's found that they're trying to, in Indiana, they're trying to pass this law where, where they want to start drafting young girls. I mean, we're talking about, what, eight, 18 years old? Is that that's the age when they start drafting the young folks? Yeah, that's like 18 years old. He said, he said, no, I, I don't want that going there. Well, because he's got a couple girls that are single that are 18. But we need to put pressure on every politician in town. I, I, I'm just going to give you this. In Acts chapter 25, uh, Paul is before, before the, uh, turn over to Acts ch chapter 25. I'm going to give you context and we'll be there. <clears throat> Acts chapter 25. I'm for it. I, I, I think we need to, we need to be, now, I got to be, you got to, they're, they're, Listen, that Bible says in a, a, false, a false balance with the Lord is an abomination. So if you get into politics, then that's wrong. Amen. Amen. Amen, folks. If, if all we're doing is trying to get our folks elected, that's not, that's not the purpose. That's not the goal. The goal, is, the goal is, number one, keep your cotton-picking fingers out of our local church. Amen. But number two, the local, I don't believe in, in, in the separation of church and state. I believe, this, I believe the separation of state and church. The, ch the state needs to stay outside the four, the four uh, walls of this building. Amen. The things that we do here, we, we have a higher commission from God Almighty. Amen. And they need to stay out. But because all, all governments are ordained of God, and God sets them up and brings them down, then they need to listen to what someone who has a Bible says to them. Amen. I believe that. So, you got, you know, write some letters. Hallelujah. Get to the point where they say, oh, no, not another one of those letters. <laughs> Amen. Put pressure. Acts, uh, Acts chapter 25, look in verse 1. Now, when Festus was coming to the province, after three days he suspended, uh, ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. When the, then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him. You know the story. You know, Paul, Paul ends up having to, having to, Appeal to Caesar, and then that, that starts Paul's trip going out. But I, I want to, I I you know, a lot of times Paul gets, to, Paul gets a bad, um, bad rap. They say, oh, well, he lost two years of his ministry. I don't know. Look, look, in, look in Acts. I was reading this morning in my Bible. Acts chapter 27, and I ran across this, verse 24. Acts 27, verse 24. So Paul, what's happened is they're, they're, ship, they're getting ready to be shipwrecked at Melita, and verse... Uh, Verse 22, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve, 
saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. So God was, now I don't know if the Lord was cutting short his ministry, but I know this. God says, hey, I want you to go preach to Caesar. <laughs> That's pretty good. Wouldn't you, I, I, I'd love to preach to Mr. Biden. Amen. And Miss Pelosi. Amen. And, and the whole crew. It would be wonderful. If you can get, if you, if, I, if, 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 if you have the, 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 the pull and the wherewithal and you can get, 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 get me in to preach or to pray the opening prayer for the, what do they call it, the joint Congress, the joint, the whole thing, that, wouldn't that be wonderful? Because, buddy, I can pray, I can pray up a storm. Hallelujah. We can, we can preach the gospel while I do that. Amen. But that, but they, they, Paul goes before them, he goes before Festus. He goes before Felix. He goes before all the magistrates, all the folks. Everybody in that palace knew about this fellow. Named. There's that crazy Jew again. Yeah, but he don't preach that same thing the other Jews preach. Yeah, I know. He's preaching that Jesus guy. <laughs> Amen. And then out of, the back, out of the back steps up this Roman centurion that was standing there when Jesus was crucified. Amen. And says, I don't know about you guys, but you better listen to him because I, I have met the one he's talking about. Amen, folks. Amen. Let me give you a couple things we've done. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Um, our, our responsibility is just, is just to try to be an influence in this cotton picking world. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll, we'll close it down. Look in verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to be a Philadelphian church. I want to be a Philadelphian Christian. I, re, I, re, I reject Laodicea. It's hard. Amen? It's hard not just to say, okay, well, let's, we'll just go with the flow. But I don't want to be a dead fish. I want, to, I want to swim upstream. Amen? Ephesians chapter 5, look in verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest. I didn't know he was talking to Baptist folks. Amen? And arise from the dead. Now he definitely was talking to Baptist folks. <laughs> And Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time. This, this is one of the verses I think really doesn't say it in the Greek. It might say something else. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. We need to redeem the time. Amen. You need to find something you can do for the Lord and just do it. And whether anybody says anything about it or not, just do it. Can you cook cookies? Cook cookies for the Lord. Amen. Can you, can you, whatever you can do, do for the Lord. Amen. Revelation 3, 1, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. I don't want to be that. I want to have the name that, 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 that the, the Lord is with him. Amen. The Lord's walking with him. Why is that? Why, why do folks have this name that they're dead? Well, Paul talked about it. He ended up in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ. The difference is your focus. If you're focused on this world, then the things of the Lord are foolishness. Amen. Running around with a flag, that's foolish. <laughs> but I got news for you, it's a blessing, isn't it? <laughs> I don't see her in here. Elizabeth. Bless, I, I, so, I, I watched y'all. I saw y'all. I saw some of you running hadn't been running. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a blessing. I said, Brother Hunter, would you probably, probably not. I might have. I, you never know. If it gets good enough, I might have. Well, let me, let me close with this. Philippians 120, according to my earnest ex expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my that's what the Lord wants. He doesn't expect you to be somebody you're not. He expects you to take that little, that little basket that, that's your life, those two little, uh, uh, two little loaves or five little loaves and two little fish, and use them for him the best you can. Amen. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Anchor, Lord, for the revival you've given this last week. Father, I pray that you'd stir the hearts. Lord, you'd keep us afire for thee. I pray, Lord, you'd help us to be found uh, at the last moment, right before you come, just telling about how good you are and what you've done. And I pray, Lord, that you might uh, stir and help uh, your
this little flock, Lord God, and use them for your glory and for your honor. I pray for safety as we go on the road, Lord. I pray that you get everybody home okay. And Lord, we look forward to the next time we meet together. And until then, help us, Lord, to be busy about thy business. And we thank you, Father, and pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Preacher.